immediate gazetting of the presidential order conferring national honors on heroes of democracy. The country has not given the recognition he duly deserved, and his family too have not given the recognition they duly deserve. The National Assembly and others commend President Buhari for declaring June 12 Democracy Day. Nigeria Custom Service receives a presidential pat on the back for generating more than 1 trillion Naira revenue in 2017. And broadcasting organizations of Nigeria and other relevant groups discuss strategy for successful transmission of the oncoming FIFA World Cup. Good evening. I am Cyril Stober in Abuja. Michael Olale is in Lagos, Mariam Adura is in Jos, and Kemi Oshin is in our Ibado Network Center. Welcome to Network News. Now, following his declaration on Wednesday that henceforth June 12 be observed as Democracy Day in Nigeria and that some heroes of democracy be given national honors, President Muhammadu Buhari has directed the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, to take immediate steps to publish the order as follows. Chief MKU Abiola, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, posthumous. Ambassador Baba Gana Kingibe, Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger. Chief Gani Fawemi, Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, posthumous. The President also directed that this should be done so that the award slated for June 12, 2018 can go on as planned. In the meantime, the Senate has commended President Buhari for declaring June 12 Democracy Day. It described the presidential decision as a process of strengthening national unity. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwok reports. June 12 election. Barely 24 hours after President Muhammad Buhari declared June 12 Democracy Day, a senator from Ogun State, Olariwanju Tejoshu, moved the motion commending the president for his decision. We need to encourage Mr. President. What he has started took us 25 years to achieve. What the president did, the president meant well. We are supposed to support this. When the president made that proclamation yesterday, is for me, he is giving himself a promise that he will conduct election that will be free, fair, and just. The senators also resolved that June 12 be declared a public holiday while May 29th be returned as date for the inauguration of a new government. Since we're changing from the 29th to the 12th, 12th must be declared a public holiday. If you are moving from 29th of May to 12th of June, it means we have to amend this constitution. And now we felt that the country has not given the recognition he duly deserved, and his family too have not given the recognition they duly deserve. The senators also described the honor done to the late MK Abiola as long overdue from the National Assembly Nation. News. And still on the June 12 declaration by the President, at the House of Representatives, it was greeted with extensive contributions from members across the board, with many commending the President for the declaration, but with the caveat. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. Commend Mr. President for recognizing June 12 as the National Democracy Day in Nigeria. I want to believe it's a very serious and a very good handshake across Niger. And this is part of the things we must have to look after and ensure that Nigeria remains a united country. I refer you completely to exclusive list Act 51 that gave power to the legislator to enact a law in respect of public holidays. The fifth schedule of that act, the principal act, states that 29th of May is our democracy day. Those were observations of members in spite of the commendations which Speaker Yakubu Dogara responded to with provisions of the Constitution. There's no winner in this uh, matter. Is to look at um, the presidential proclamation in line with uh, Section 2 of the law and see whether that will Section 2 will over, uh, override the provision in the schedule 
which is um, number five item, Democracy Day, 29th May. And that's a question that we must um, resolve using the best minds that we have in the House. The House has, in the meantime, referred the issue to House Committee on Rules and Business. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. And the government and people of Ogun State have expressed gratitude to President Buhari for conferring the highest national honor of the land. Posthumously, on Chief Moshuda Biola, correspondent Shegun Lawali has the details. Since the demise of Chief MKO Abiola, the acclaimed winner of the June 12 presidential election in 1993, June 12 has remained an unforgettable day. This is the reason why some state government in the southwest region continue to observe June 12 every year since the annulment of the election as Democracy Day. For the people and government of Ogun State, it is gladdening and welcoming to have the federal government declare June 12 as the official Democracy Day. This is a welcome development. I must express the appreciation of uh, the government of Ogun State to the presidency. It has always been our demand that June 12 is the democracy day. So in spite of all our misgivings about uh, Buhari, that he gave it to us, we, I commend him. And as Nigerians look forward to celebrating Democracy Day on June 12, the federal government has also decided to award posthumously the highest honor of the land, GCFR, to late MKO Abiola and his running mate, Ambassador Babagana Kingebe, as GCON, as well as Chief Ghani fired me for his tireless human rights struggle. It's a long struggle, and um, it is beyond Abiyokuta. It is beyond Ogu State. Abiyala was a national figure. If you are saying that you are recognizing June 12, you should then recognize MKO Abiola as a former president of the country. It will be recalled that in a bid to immortalize MKO's name, the Olushagun Oshoba led administration named the then Ogun State Polytechnic after him, now called Moshud Abiola Polytechnic. Shagun Lawali, NTN News. From Lagos comes more commendation for the president for his commitment to the sustenance of democratic ideals in the country. Doing dear has that report. Of 1993 is a date many Nigerians, especially residents of Lagos, will not forget in a hurry following the annulment of June 12 presidential election acclaimed to be the freest and most credible presidential election in the history of the country. 25 years after the annulment of the June 12 presidential elections, respondents say the declaration of June 12 as Democracy Day in Nigeria is victory for not only the winner of that election, late Chief Moshud Kashimawu Olawale Abiola, but to all those who pay the ultimate sacrifice for democracy to be enthroned in the country Nigeria. But now that we have decided to celebrate the day that we've properly entrenched democracy in Nigeria, the two tests for this declaration will be what happened from now on about democracy. The declaration of the day by President Muhammad Buhari as Nigeria's Democracy Day and the confirmation of the country's highest national honor, family members and a cross-section of Nigerians say it is a new dawn for Nigeria's democracy. Yesterday when I heard the news, I, I couldn't believe it. It's, I, I felt like instantly like 10 pounds, like 50 pounds lighter. Like even, even today, it's, it's so unreal. I see it as a welcome development. That is the highest honor that can be given to any Nigerian. With the country moving towards another election year, stakeholders say political actors must learn from past events and continue to uphold the tenets of democracy in Nigeria. In Lagos, doing dear NT News. And there'll be more on the June 12 declaration much later after this break. Stay with us on Network News. This is another empty land acquired from a private citizen through a mutually beneficial negotiation that was at the instance of the Borno State Government. Even though strategically located along Gumari Airport in Meidugri, 
the land was not put to use for tens of years. Now, the story is different. That empty land is where these modern school buildings have been built. The school, being built with hostels in close location, is designed to cater for the educational needs of at least 1,000 school-aged children from more than 20 local government areas who lost parents to the Boko Haram insurgency. This is another legacy of Governor Kashim Shetima. Here in Nigeria to stay, City Lights and Iglo, where you meet quality and affordability under one roof. City Lights, redefining lighting experience in Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria, through the Ecological Fund Office, domiciled in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, awarded and executed several ecological intervention projects between May 2015 and December 2017, spread across all the states of the Federation. 53 of these projects have been completed and will be commissioned and handed over to the different benefiting communities. This is to ensure that the communities assume ownership and sustainable management of the projects. For more information, check the national newspapers. Announcer, Dr. Habiba Lawal, Permanent Secretary, Ecological Fund Office. Iconic Nigeria, in partnership with the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, and Push CV, invites you to this year's world-class mentoring session for unemployed and underemployed graduates, a program called The Graduate, date 20th June 2018, time 8am, venue, The Avenue Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos. The workshop, which comes with a theme, a dialogue on economic diversification and entrepreneurship to transform Nigeria's economy, will feature Dr. Andrew S. Nevin, global leader, Project Blue, and Oleshon Onigbinde, co-founder and lead partner, Budget, as well as Steen Hatzberg and Victor Banjo as existing keynote speakers, amongst others. Register now at IconicNigeria.com before 11th June 2018. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for staying with us on the news. Now, the federal government says it is determined to enhance economic cooperation between Nigeria and the Republic of Tanzania for the benefit of both countries. President Muhammad Buhari stated this when he granted audience to the new High Commissioner of Tanzania to Nigeria, Muhyiddin Moweto. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the details. It was a befitting diplomatic reception for the Tanzanian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mohidin Moweto, on arrival at the full court of the Asorok Villa. <music> the envoy thereafter presented his letter of credence to President Muhammad Buhari to formally begin official responsibilities in Nigeria. At an interactive session, President Muhammad Buhari congratulated the government of Tanzania for the recent discovery of gas reserves in the coast region, saying it offers a lot of opportunities for the country. Nigeria and Tanzania, he said, have a lot of potentials which can make them key economic actors in the region. The president promised to work towards improving bilateral relations between the two countries, which dates back to the pre-colonial era. The Tanzanian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mohidin Moweto, underscored the positive roles Nigerian companies play in the economy of his country, especially in the manufacturing and banking sectors, while expecting to see the economic ties between Nigeria and Tanzania taken to a new height. Mr. Moweto used the opportunity to convey the appreciation of the president of Zanzibar, a semi-autonomous region within Tanzania, to President Muhammad Buhari for the deployment of 41 Nigerian teachers in the area under the Technical Aid Coup program. President Buhari also received the letter of credence from the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea to Nigeria, Mr. Lee Intei. The President commended the Korean government for its educational development programs in Nigeria through the Korean International Cooperation Agency, COICA. The Korean ambassador praised Nigeria's new economic reform initiatives encapsulated under the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP. The plan, among others, targets to achieve 7% GDP growth rate by the year 2020. The Korean envoy, Lee in tain had earlier inspected a ceremonial guard of honor as part of the befitting diplomatic ceremony put together to formally welcome him to Nigeria. The State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And still talking more cooperation, President Buhari is requesting the African Export Import Bank to align its lending schemes with the agricultural priorities of Nigeria as the biggest beneficiary of its institutions, loans, and facilities. This was while receiving the president of the bank and chairman of its board of directors at the State House. And now we take you over to our Ibaro Network Center for more reports with Kemi Oshi. Thank you, Cyril, and a warm welcome to Ibaro. The declaration of June 12 as Democracy Day by President Muhammad Wari as against May 29th has been received with mixed reactions in Ibaro. Busala Waru has the reports. For the past 18 years, Democracy Day has been celebrated on 29th of May, which is the second time in history an elected civilian administration took over from the military government. The acceptance of May 29th has, however, raised different reactions over time, as some state governments have gone ahead to choose June 12 as a public holiday to commemorate democracy. After due consultations, President Muhammad Buhari says that henceforth, June 12th, will now be celebrated as Democracy Day. What is the take of people on this decision? However it is might be, better late than never, we are so happy. When May 29 was declared as uh, Democracy Day, I thought it was a wrong step. Now that uh, President Buhari has declared June 12th for us, we are happy about it. The effect to which the presumed winner of the June 12, 1993 election, late Chief M.K. Wabiola, is to be awarded posthumously Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, in Ibadan. Busola Owuru, NT News. 
And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to Cyril in Abuja for more on Network News. Right. Thank you, Kemi. And uh, staying with the June 12 declaration, I have joining me in the studio, daughter of the late Chief Moshud Kashimawu Olawale Abiola, Adirin Sola Abiola. Adirin Sola, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, sir. How did the MQ Abiola family receive the news of this declaration? Well, um, I think that's a question uh, that, that the answer is already out there for everyone to see. Uh, I spoke with my brother today, Barack Hala. He was very happy. Mm -hmm. To say we're elated is uh, putting it mildly. I'm also... It's been quite an emotional roller coaster. I've cried, I've laughed, uh, we've celebrated. It's, it's good that this has finally happened. Um, Daddy is getting the recognition that he deserves 20 years after his death, 25 years after the June 1293 elections. No member of the family had any inkling this was coming. It took you by surprise. Uh, I definitely was surprised. Right. Yeah. At about when the struggle was on, um, you were pretty young then, yes, weren't I you? Yes, I was. So it took a while before you came to appreciate the issues that led to that. And how did you react to that as a, as a young person? Well, uh, for me, uh, there was a lot of studying and um, a lot of discussions about Daddy around the house. We were hopeful for his return someday. We kept looking forward to it. Um, but then at the same time, I was brought up to appreciate that he fought for what he believed in, he stood up for what he thought was right. He placed collective benefit above his comfort as a person and that those are the values that matter above everything else. And um, uh, back home, I grew up in Lagos, Abeokita. Every June 12, July 7, there are clips talking about um, everything that happened during that period, the campaign trail, the incarceration, his death. So it, it, it was a very emotional process for me. So this, this happening, it's like, it's like um, all those years of struggle have, have finally yielded fruit. And I am so, honestly, to say that I'm happy would, 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 would not really cut it. All right. Part of the commendation for this administration is that it listens to what the people want. Another aspect of it is, for instance, young people have said they've got to be part of the governance process. Yes. And uh, recently you saw the president yes. sign into law. The not not too young to run bill. Yeah, so what, what are your impressions of that? Well, for me, as a member of All Progressives Congress, it's, uh, it's a great thing. Uh, young people played a very key role in the 2015 elections. And the president signing this bill, as far as I'm concerned, was keeping faith with young people and saying, thank you for your support. It's a gesture that says that young people are also stakeholders in how the affairs of the country are run. It's a, it's a gesture that says that he believes in the power of youth to contribute meaningfully to processes within their country. It's a gesture that says young people have what it takes to be active participants in governance. So for me, it's People say a lot about the age of the president, but this is a president that has given young people inclusion. The, a similar bill was sponsored in previous administrations. It didn't scale through. And uh, this, the, the APC-led House, the APC-led Senate, the Not Too Young to Run bill had overwhelming support. In our states, the Not Too Young to Run bill had overwhelming support. And then the president signed the bill. So this, this just shows that young people have, they have the backing of their presidents. The love is there in his heart. He is supporting us. And we need to rise up to that challenge by giving given everything that we have to develop in this country. All right. Adina Sola has been nice talking to you. I can see you're Same really, here. really happy. It shows. Yes, I am. All right. Thank Thanks. you, sir. Thanks for coming. Now, let's return to uh, the visit of uh, uh, the President Muhammad Buhari to the United States, which is already yielding positive results as the U.S. has announced a donation of $102 million humanitarian support towards the development of the Northeast. Now, the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria conveyed the message, uh, the national conversation on the humanitarian development peace nexus in Abuja. Oyeye Miyajai reports. President Donald Trump had, during the visit of President Mohamed Buhari to the United States, pledged to support Nigeria in different ways. And a few weeks after that, Nigeria acquired the Tucano aircraft, which is being used to flush out the remnants of the Boko Haram insurgents. Now, the U.S. is again contributing towards resuscitating and developing the affected zone. This national conversation on the humanitarian development peace nexus, which has brought together international organizations and Ministry of Budget and National Planning, is part of the efforts to provide solutions to the devastating effects of the Boko Haram attacks in the Northeast. Priority is being given to programs that focus on rehabilitation and resettlement, peace building, security, infrastructure, and social services, as well as resilience building. 
that unless we go to the root crisis that was there before the crisis, and that has in large part led to this crisis, unless we address those crises, we will be still struggling using this humanitarian intervention. The forum offered the platform for all participants to make contributions on how best to address the developmental and humanitarian issues. It is about changing lives, transforming hope into something tangible. We are speaking in terms of coordination. The government of the region have spent a lot, while the developing partners have spent a lot. It is much needed because we know, we know that food security is going to become a challenge come October. The consensus is that peace is a collective responsibility that must be built to enable the people affected by insurgency to pick up their socio-economic life from the pieces. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTN News. Nigeria is the biggest beneficiary of the African Export Import Bank, as talking about its loans and facilities. And that's why President Buhari is requesting the bank to align its lending schemes with the agricultural priorities of Nigeria. Adamu Sambu reports from the State House that this was while the president was receiving the president of the bank and chairman of its board of directors. President Muhammadu Buhari is worried that in spite of the impressive array of lending to institutions and industries in Nigeria by the bank, agriculture is yet to be taken on board. He said with the country virtually achieving the desired food security as well as massive employment of able-bodied Nigerians through agriculture, the bank must take interest in the promising sector of the economy. In the meantime, the president directed the secretary to the government of the federation to ensure the issuance of land without further delay for the construction of the regional headquarters of the bank and another for a proposed center for medical excellence in tertiary healthcare in the FCT. The center to be established in collaboration with the King's Hospital in London will provide advanced treatment for cancers, hematology, and cardiology in Nigeria which will result in the creation of hundreds of jobs. The president asked the bank to consider the allocation of more resources to the development of infrastructure in the country. Finance Minister Kemia Deoshun had informed the meeting of plans by Nigeria to raise her equity in the bank. The president of the bank, Nigeria's Dr. Oke Orama, said the dilution of the country's shareholding in the bank needs to be addressed to justify its preeminent position as a leading beneficiary. The bank's exposure in Nigeria is currently put at about $4 billion. The African Export Import Bank, which marks 25th anniversary this year, is bringing the events to Nigeria in recognition of the pioneering role played by the country in the formation of the financial institution. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. The Nigeria Customs Service recorded more than 1 trillion Naira revenue generation in year 2017. In May 2018, it generated 101 billion Naira. Now, lauding this performance, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju says the service should brace as its role will now also involve facilitating investment. State House correspondent Gideon Unifadi reports. Customs uh, Service, Nigeria Customs Service, has performed its traditional roles exceptionally in the past few years. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo giving the Nigerian Customs Service a pat on the back for good performance in its traditional role in the past two years as against what you used to obtain. But the next few years will be even more interesting for the Customs Service. The service was commended for acknowledging the pivotal role of technology and the leadership getting involved to fashion out better ways of having a conducive environment for doing business in the country. With this active collaboration, we have reduced processes and documentation required for import and export. We're also on the threshold of launching the national trade platform. This is the integration of all port and customs processes and documentation through a single window. This is bound to remarkably cut down processing times for all inward and outward trade increase revenues and introduce visibility and of course transparency to all transactions. The vice president says he recognizes the need for well-trained officers 
to carry out their critical task and commence the brains behind the formation of the college. He calls the graduating students, 40 in number, to be diligent in their duties and work with integrity. Controller General of Customs, Amit Ali, says the need to establish the college was born out of the determination to have in place an efficient, disciplined, and prudent organization that the nation can be proud of. With the completion of this course, we have therefore opened a new chapter in our strategic approach to capacity building. We have opened a new career with path and growth for our middle level managers. We are laying a strong foundation for development and nurturing of managerial skills and leadership. I can say with a sense of satisfaction that even at a pioneer stage, we have equaled the standard we met in Jaji. We are even striving to surpass it. The vice president would keep this souvenir as a guest of the institution, while the first set of the senior division course one of 2018 also can now proudly have PSC added to their names, ditto for others that would pass through the college. In Abuja, Jide Onifati, NT News. Delegates to the just concluded 61st UNWTO meeting where guests of the government and people of Lagos State, where Africa's city of the century is under construction. Anthony Forsen reports. The delegates who have just concluded their meeting in Abuja arrived in Lagos as part of the technical component of the meeting. They were received at the Lagos State Government House in Alausa by the governor, Akiwumi Ambodi. As you move across Lagos, you'll be able to observe that it's technically a construction site. The ultimate goal is that those infrastructure will not drive people to come and spend their little weekend just the same way you have decided to spend your Wednesday in Lagos. The host minister, Lai Mohammed, and the UNWTO Secretary General, Zurab Polulishkavili, expressed gratitude to the governor for his support in the successful hosting of the meeting. Without the general support and cooperation of Lagos State, we will not have been able to host this meeting. We are here to promote like, a new touristic destination, be sure that the cow commerce will be next to you to promote this fantastic place. Eco-Atlantic City, designed and built on a reclaimed part of the Atlantic Ocean to the highest standard and quality, was the delegate's next port of call. The project manager who took the delegates on a journey of the project so far said the city is a 10,000 square meters of prime real estate that will provide essential space for residents and business alike for people to live work and invest. The city has been designed to accommodate approximately 300,000 residents and 150,000 daily commuters. Eco Atlantic City is poised to be the new financial capital of Africa and is set to change the shape of Lagos, Nigeria and the continent. This is one of the biggest uh, projects in the world, uh, which is not a dream. Maybe it was 10 years ago dream, but it's reality, and this, this will be the new top touristic destination. It's very, very impressive. It's thinking big uh, with, a, with a, a solid plan, uh, but thinking beyond sort of the, the boundaries of normal thinking. And uh, that, that's what really impresses us. Strategically located on the land that affords easy access to various parts of the city will have shopping malls, international schools, central business districts, a world-class hospital, among others. From Lagos, Antony Forsen, NTA News. And Nigeria has continued to earn international respect with increasing investments in the last three years. This is the standpoint of guests on NTA's program, Moment for Thought, encouraging the citizens to buy into the developmental strides of the federal government. Between the 20, 29th of May 2015 to date, the present administration had less, far less than the, the previous administration had. But if you go around the country today, you will see that Nigeria is now a construction site. The, his reception by President Donald Trump of the United States of America, yes. it really showed up more the standing of the president 
understanding of Nigeria and Nigerians. The program comes up tonight at half past 11 on the network service of the NTA. Lagos, the center of excellence, is where we go next. Michael is standing in. He'll tell us about diaspora remittance. Michael? Thank you, Cyril. Welcome to Lagos. The remittance inflow of Nigerians in the diaspora has sustained a positive growth of 1.4%, thereby making it the highest cash inflow in sub-Saharan Africa in the 2017. Abolari Salami in this report takes a look at what economic benefits the nation stands to benefit from the remittance growth. For decades, economists have applied diverse metrics for measuring world's creation, human development, and economic growth of a nation. One of such is the gross domestic product, GDP. In 2017, the World Bank in a report said cash flows to Africa rose from $38.4 billion on average between 2005 and 2007 to $64.9 billion between 2014 and 2016, with Nigeria recording $22.3 billion as the first in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, in that sense, I think we need to look at the positive contribution that migrants make to society. And when we start recognizing that, um, uh, specifically looking at diaspora and, and migrants through their work, I think we're able to reap these positive benefits. Uh, when we leave the country illegally and they work elsewhere, they do contribute to the GDP or to the economy of those other countries where they've gone. And they also contribute to the economies of the countries where they left. In spite of the apparent economic benefits and migrant remittances often seen as viable source of foreign exchange, stakeholders have suggested the need for a more robust economic environment in the country. Some come in through government raising money, like diaspora bonds, where foreigners invest in, in securities, floated by government. That's also a means of money coming in. So basically, when people migrate and migrate properly and get jobs over there, the country where they left actually are receiving a lot of capital inflow. And Nigeria is one of the major beneficiaries of remittances. They submitted that on the aggregate, migrant remittance flow is more stable than foreign direct investments. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Stay with us. Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. In unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes. Germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettles One Cup Full for surface cleaning. In your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid. To protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs, be dead or sure. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Eh, hey, hey, time don't reach again for the biggest event for top football matter. Now, mobile pill and win. And as millions of people around the world scatter their head on top of their favorite teams, Mobile One makes sure saying you go hammer your own trophy big time. Whether you be mechanic, driver, even car owner, now mobile pill and win. Just buy the 4 liter size of mobile super 1000 lubricant. Fill the front and back labels and you go see pin number. Text mobile plus the pin to 58123. And instanta, you go win airtime. That pin where you send so go also qualify you for the raffle draw for mobile pill and win promo. Where you fit with tier rubber moto generator, gas cooker, motorcycle, tricycle, smartphone, and other prices there. No be small, you know. Mobile promo go shell it from the 15th of May. Go reach 31st of August 2018. The more mobile lubricant you buy, the more your chance to win. No tell yourself, oh. make you they feel they win, they go. <laughs> Terms and conditions they shall. Make it mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the daring and invincible Louis the Mosquito. Responsible for 200 malaria cases all on its own. Is there anything that can kill Louis? Martin! 
Presenting Morty's Soul Guard. Its powerful formula kills malaria mosquitoes fast. So, get Morty's Power Guard. Death Toll Team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough, and cold? No. They are spread through gems which are everywhere. You collect gems that cause diseases. You pick up gems from any surface like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of gems. That's why you need to fight gems to stay healthy by washing your hands and taking your bath with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing gems. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is bath, bath, bath yourself. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. We're back in Abuja with more news. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma, calls for improved private sector investment in Nigeria by European businesses as Statistician General of the Federation, Yemi Kale, commends federal government for its resilience in promoting inclusive growth and development in challenging times. Here is Chiazalam Eki with Business News. Many thanks for joining me. A bit of some cheering news. Latest report from the African Sovereign Wealth Fund Index indicates that Nigeria has been ranked number one in the first edition of the African Sovereign Wealth Fund Index, pulling 62.49% to beat Rwanda and Ghana. The index, which measures the size and other variables of the existing 12 sovereign wealth funds on the African continent, puts the total assets at about $89 billion. And Statistician General of the Federation, Yemi Kale, says Nigeria remains an aspirational destination for all to come and do business. While the recent economic downturn presented a challenging time for the economy, to the amazement of all, Nigeria was undaunted as hard decisions were taken to weather the storm. For us in Nigeria and at the National Bureau of Statistics, we also understand that the direct economic benefits of tourism, which reflects the direct internal spending within the country from both residents and non-residents on tourism-related activities, as well as its indirect and induced effects, ranging from job creation to increase, increased revenue through taxes and foreign exchange to improved local infrastructure are far-reaching. And stakeholders in the gas sector say investment opportunities exist in Nigeria's gas sector. They say these investments worth $51 billion could be spread to free trade zones, central gas processing facilities, fertilizer plants, gas exploration and production, among others. They, however, stated that development of a robust gas network is critical for the development of gas industrial hub across the country. And to the stock market reports, trading on the equities market records four consecutive winning streak as the all share index gained 1.58%, valued at over 7.6 billion naira in 4,726 deals. Dangote Cement, Nascon, and Wapco led the gainers table, and on the flip side, Eplat, Etana, and Zenith Bank made the list. But Wapic, Guarantee Trust Bank, and Diamond Bank were the most traded stock. That's the package. I'm Chiaz Alameki. Network News continues. Please stay with us. All right. President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, elected as the vice president of the 107th session of the ongoing International Labour Conference in Geneva, Switzerland, is soliciting the parliament's support for Nigeria in the fight against corruption and insurgency. Emmanuel Ayimiru reports. Another privilege came the way of Nigeria. Comrade Ayuba Waba, being a member of the ILO governing board and a vice president of the ongoing conference, solicits ILO's flagship programs for Nigeria's development. We will continue to partner with our government at all levels to ensure the security and territorial integrity of our people and communities. It is on this account that we call on ILO to urgently consider Nigeria to benefit from her security and resilience program. The program brings freedom, security, and provides a stake in the reconciliation, restoration, and rebuilding of communities. 
Meanwhile, this time last year, Nigerian government workers and employers' representatives secured one slot each on the governing board of the International Labour Organization for a period of three years, with ILO having over 50 years' experience on development cooperation on all continents with over 700 active programs. What can Nigeria benefit occupying three slots on the governing body of the ILO? We have uh, people on the board of uh, the Labor Institute in Turin. That is the ILO Labor Institute. It's one of the gains. Nigeria was nominated to be on that board. It's left for us to take home most of the conclusions in the outset to improve our governance system. It's rare for a country to occupy three slots on the ILO governing board. Therefore, Nigerians want maximum benefits. From ILO conference in Geneva, Switzerland, Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Governor Lalong begins distribution of newly acquired tractors to farmers. This and more with Mariam in our JOS Network Centre. Good evening, Mariam. Welcome to JOS. Governor Simon Lalong has presented tractors to some beneficiaries in the first phase of the distribution under the state government's tractorization scheme. Paul Dama reports that the governor cautioned the beneficiaries against selling the tractors having obtained them at subsidized rates. Presenting the keys to some of the beneficiaries, Governor Simon Lalong said under the initiative, there will be equitable distribution of the tractors and other implements among farmers who have paid and met the necessary requirements. The president commissioned it and he commended us and I know that he even mentioned it at the, state, at the National Executive Council. That Plateau has led an example, good example, and all other states should follow. Commissioner for Agriculture, Huzaya Finangwai, said the governor who is farmer friendly has demonstrated commitment to transform agriculture and ensure that farmers move away from subsistence to mechanize farming, given the enormous agricultural endowments in the state. The caretaker chairman of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Plateau State, called on farmers to take advantage of the opportunity to own tractors and advised those who have benefited to make judicious use of the tractors. Farmers should take advantage of this uh, good gesture from His Excellency because he has passion for agriculture. The distribution will continue in phases to beneficiaries across the 17 local government areas of the state. In Joss, Paul Dama, NTA News. The Nigerian University's Theatre Arts Festival, NUTAF 2018, is underway in Joss with the theme Building Bridges. Governor Simon Lalong, in his message at the opening of the fiesta, re echoed government's commitment in developing the tourism sector. Kim Gotts reports that participating students are drawn from 25 universities in Nigeria. It was not a dull moment, but entertaining with cultural dance and performance by students of participating universities across the nation set the tone for this year's Nigerian University Theatre Arts Festival. Governor Simon Lalong, in his message conveyed by the Commissioner for Information, Yakubu Detti, said the theme for the festival, Building Bridges, is apt with the current security challenges faced in the state and the country. The state government will continue to promote arts and culture because therein is the secret of promoting friendship and brotherhood. Vice-Chancellor Plateau State University Bacchus commended Nutaf for 